Hello, apa khabar semuanya? My name is Vincent and welcome back again to lesson 6, basic pattern for data analytics, in which that today we're going to talk about optimization. In particular, we're going to talk about LP simplex, which is linear programming simplex, and we're going to talk about how we can maximize our impacts with minimum resources. So that's the team topic for today, right? So just moving on a little bit of recap of what we've done. We've talked about basic pattern for data analytics by using Jupyter iPattern Notebook. And we have talked about stocks prediction, um, employee retention, social media trend, and moving on is the optimization process. Okay. So moving on is that to optimize our life with simplex. So uh, what we are going to learn in particular is that we are going to understand how important is operation research okay we are going to learn how to build models in order to solve optimization problems okay third we are going to learn how to solve linear programming problem in particular with excel and learn how to read a degree of sensitivity analysis from the excel and finally we are going to move on to understand how integer programming is important to solve a more complex problems so in particular where the decision for both is integer okay we are going to discuss about this further and for the problem outline uh lpip so all of these cases we are going to talk more in the step-by-step -step tutorial which is sort of the case studies of this lesson right so just to move on is that i would like to introduce to you about operations research so these are very interesting concepts about how analytics is used in operations nowadays to if for example like in um uh, delivery assignment problems, traffic assessment problems, those problems that requires big companies out there to send multiple samples um, to the markets. Yeah, I'm talking about GPNG and Unilever and everything like those that sell the products in the supermarket. So all of those, they are leveraging on their personal research. So let us try and uh, take a look at what this even further, okay? How do you visualize the scope of our increasingly complex world? Let's look at the size of the numbers. We now measure markets and competitors in hundreds, customers and citizens in billions, and daily bytes of created data in the quintillions. How can management win in a world with so many variables? The answer is operations research, applying advanced analytics for revolutionary gains in organizational performance. The Franz Edelman Awards celebrate the accomplishments of those who have achieved excellence in operations research. These leading innovators applied OR's 21st century technology to redefine environmental dynamics for greater sustainability, reimagine rail transit logistics, and revolutionize product supply and delivery. As the world grows more challenging, organizations like yours are innovating toward a better future. Operations research has a broad reach it offers higher profits and increased market share. And it has improved management in business, government, the military, healthcare, education, and nonprofits. And has applications at all levels of organizations. For example, OR has helped governments achieve environmental balance and sustainability alongside improved public health. When the Delaware River Basin Commission faced the challenge of maintaining reservoir levels for half of New York City's drinking water while protecting wild fish populations, they turned to advanced analytics. Their operations research solution used cost-benefit trade-off analysis to create the Flexible Flow Management Policy, a dynamic water release system to balance reservoir storage and wildlife needs. This created a 200% increase in trout and shad habitats with minimal impact on risk of drought in New York City. Applying operations research means recognizing the value of the minute, or in the case of the Netherlands Railways, the minute. Transporting more than 1.1 million passengers daily, Netherlands Railways needed to revise their 35-year-old railway timetable. To more accurately match trains to expected user traffic, the Dutch railway company adopted IBM's iLog optimization technology to improve train operations. Measuring variables like average boarding time and seasonal variations, Netherlands Railways applied sophisticated analytics to optimize their scheduling processes. 
Thanks to their OR solution, on-time train performance reached a new record of 87%, and the railway increased annual profits by 40 million euros. With fast data growth as the new normal, true management science pioneers will ensure data mastery throughout their organizations. Take consumer product giant Procter & Gamble, which posted $82.6 billion in sales in 2011. With too many manufacturing plants and a supply chain spanning continents, Procter & Gamble turned to operations research for their solution. Applying new operations research models created insight all the way up to the executive level, resolving product redundancies, navigating changing regulations, and consolidating factories across the United States. The result was more than $1 billion in cost savings over 15 years. As the world rapidly grows more intricate, operations research and analytics offer us the tools to master the complexity. This means agile business, streamlined costs, faster processes. These qualities illustrate the power of OR and analytics to navigate an ocean of information. And with the work of innovators like you, create a brighter future. Yeah, so that's all about the operations research. It's very cool, isn't it? I mean, you can create the future, and maybe in the sense that you can create robots and then possibly uh, manage the operations of it, like how you can make a robot like more efficiently and then rule over the world. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, those are the kinds of like things and applications that you can do with operations research. It helps multinational companies to do better goods for their own companies and for the sake of other people, how they can do things more efficiently and how can they do things more effectively. So those are the focus of what we are going to do to learn a little bit about operations research. Okay, and this is the first step towards it. And again, there's also admin words. If you see here, you can click on the link. You can open this access this YouTube video. The, um, the repository is just below there at the YouTube description and just click on it and then see what kind, what else that operation research can offer to you and your business so that's all okay you can go home now no, just kidding right so moving on is that we are going to learn uh two different kind of things so first is production optimization and reading list optimization so those are like we, we are going to do this with excel because i mean it's readily available for us but also we are going to learn about a little bit about Python in general and we can discuss a little bit why Python is better in Excel or maybe why Excel is better in Python and what cases there are, etc. Okay. So moving on, uh, what we are going to learn today is build models. We need to learn how to build the models for the business usage, optimization problems, and a little bit about LP and IP problem. Okay. So how are you going to do step by step? So in business, first of all, you need to understand the question first. Problem definition always the first. And second, model, build a model for the optimization and solution. After that, come up with the action plan. And finally, you implement it in your business. Okay. And of course, it's an iterative process. So after you implement it, there'll be more problems coming up. So you do the whole things. After implementation, then there might, there might be some other things that you can optimize. Then you can do the whole things once more. Okay. Right. And then um, for the build models, like there's, uh, there are three things that you might want to understand. So it's okay if you don't understand it now. I'm trying to, I'll, I'll try to take an analogy to understand better okay so first of all is decision variables so variables that can be set by the decision maker which is something that you can control objective is like the goal what is the decision marker uh, that you want to optimize what is it okay can be revenue can be profit and so on so constraints uh, is basically things that uh, makes you that you need to limit uh, your decision variables to reach a limited limited objective Okay, so for example, let's say that you have a factory, you want to maximize your revenue. Okay, so objective is maximizing revenue. And your decision variables can be the products that you, uh, that you produce in order to sell. Okay, so you can produce product A, B, C, and so on. And afterwards, right, of course, if you do not have the constraints, 
you have unlimited resources, then you can produce as many as you want, and your uh, your objective, your revenue will be unlimited as well. But it's not the case in reality, so there's definitely is a constraint. For example, like resources or space, you don't have the space to hold all the inputs of the products. So all of those is the uh, the constraints you know to limit your uh revenue. Okay, so. So how to maximize the revenue using the product mixes, which is the how, and finally given constraints, which is the resources. Okay, and moving on, we are going to use linear and integer programming. So linear programming is that you use couple of lines. So two lines create a dot, it will intersect. Three lines will create a shape, so it will become something like triangle. For example, or maybe four lines, then it will become more shape, assuming if they are not parallel. So you keep doing that until then you find a decision boundary, things that is within your control. And then based on that decision boundary, you find which one that could optimize it by using corner method or by using uh, ease of profit line. So those uh, we are going to talk through again in case by case. But for the integer programming, it's basically the same thing with linear programming, but is that you will use a little bit of branch, branch and bound method. So that is a little bit uh, of a complicated complicated method, but just easily to uh, explain maybe like there's a dot here and then there's a lower bound and upper bound. So it will intuitively see what part of upper bound, what part of lower bound, and which one is the maximum. Because simple that you cannot do, uh, you need to have an integer decision variable. So you cannot produce like 5.5 .5 gal, uh, like cartons of milk for example because you need to produce an integer number of milk so one two three four five six so something like that okay so moving on is that we will end this lesson here so moving on if you are still interested please feel free to go through my course description like youtube description in order to find my step-by-step -step tutorial with that i would like to say thank you and for the next lesson, we are going to recap our tutorials and we are going to talk about some possibilities of the next pattern uh, or maybe the analytics for business application tutorial. Okay, thank you and bye-bye.